Place. Yeah, there's one law for all, no law at all. Yeah. You know, and the public, if, if a member of the public was accused of such a crime, historically or not, he would be arrested, he would be questioned after nine hours in a cell with no belt and no shoelaces on, and he would be bailed away or remanded if he was a threat to the public, uh, if they deemed him a threat to the public. Well, that's what happens to a member of the public. What happens to a member of parliament? There's 24 suspected MPs, a dossier of evidence, they've not even been arrested. So this is a two-tier police system we're talking about. There is yeah, a law for the, the politicians BBC. and a law for the, uh, for the people. In 2005, the European um, Parliament uh, brought in an act to protect European MPs. Now, I don't know if you know, but British MPs are European MPs as well. they e e EU MPs. Um, and it states that members of uh, Parliament, European members of Parliament, are immune from questioning on any crime except a hate crime and driving offences, and both of those must be current, they cannot be historical. Yeah, and that was brought in in 2005. The reason it was brought in back then was it, it was it was designed to protect MPs that send soldiers to war that then go on and accidentally kill civilians, so they can't be held accountable for murder. The MPs can't be held accountable. And now they're using that law, brought in for one reason, they've turned it on its head, and it's now protecting them from being questioned over serious matters such as child rape, child torture and child murder. That is unacceptable in Britain. These, these MPs, the 24, they need to be suspended immediately because they're still in there making policies for this country and then they need to be arrested and they need to be investigated promptly. Well, that's not happening and I'm hoping the guys that have just gone into that meeting are going to make that quite clear that there cannot be one law for one and one law for another. It's one law for everyone or no law at all. You know? so, and so far, touch. I mean, I haven't even managed to get a senior officer uh, from the Metropolitan Police to take me on toe-to-toe -to -toe about this issue. They're frightened to death of this issue because it's, ha it's true. MPs are immune, like it's a disease. They're immune from questioning on these matters. So, uh, unless David Cameron says it's OK. Well, you know, David's attitude so far, when he was exposed on uh, this morning by Philip Schofield, he was handed uh, an envelope with, I think, 16 names on it then. Back then, it's 24 now, but 16 names on it. And he said, oh, I'm not taking that. I don't want to turn this into a witch hunt for gays. What the blue blazes is that supposed to mean? It's got absolutely nothing to do with being homosexual. It's got to do with being a paedophile. It's got to do with being depraved. And it's got to do with child rape, torture and murder. So when he says, oh, I'm not doing that because, you know, I don't want to turn it into a witch hunt for gays, that was the biggest bum steer, which makes him an apologist for these people. They are not humans. They are subhumans. They are creatures in there. They live in a different world where all of this is normal to them. Uh, but these are our children. You know, we can't keep on like this. Either the police act for the people or the people must act themselves and brush the police aside because they are not doing their jobs. I was just speaking to one lady here who was arrested this morning. or, or she, was, she was arrested and put in a cell and uh, be, because she was protesting. That's pretty prompt. That's pretty effective. So why can't they do it with much more serious and heinous crimes like child rape, child torture and child murder? It, um, it beggars belief that uh, the government and these, these creatures within our government have got away with it for so long. And people do say that they've been doing it for 300 years or more. It's, it's natural, you know, but now we've got the um, exposure of the royals and we all know that, you know, they all take mistresses, but that's not good enough for them. You know, there have been uh, hunting expeditions where children from care homes have been hunted in the forest and killed. Uh, the bones in Ireland were found, 800 children's dismembered bones that clearly you can see that they've been abused in some way and they've been tortured. You know, nobody is, is held accountable at the moment for that. And the evidence is now being presented by good people like Simon Danzo and John Mann straight to Parliament, straight to the police. Well, it's been weeks. Where are the arrests? Exactly what it says on there. Where are the arrests? 22 suspects has now gone up to 24 and not one single arrest. What's wrong with this? What's wrong with this? If that had been me, I'd have been sat in a police cell. Or Ben Fellows, he was arrested on return into the country for perverting the course of justice, for making an accusation. 
So what did he do? He spent Christmas and New Year in Wormwood Scrubs. So if they can do that to someone who's making an accusation, why can they not do that to the people suspected and accused? There can't be a two-tier police law, uh, policing policy in this country, and that's something that really does need to be addressed. So I, I, I shall keep banging on about that for years to come, because as far as I'm concerned, I know what happens to the public. The public have one... There, there is a way that the, the police's policy, <coughs> and their exact words are, you arrest to allow for a prompt and effective investigation. Well, I don't see nothing prompt about this, and I don't see nothing effective about this. And I haven't seen any arrests yet, except for activists and the people making the accusations. So, uh, uh, until that system changes, now I refuse to consent to be policed, and uh, I refuse to vote until we're given anything other than subhuman creatures to vote for. Because, you know, none of us see what goes on behind those walls in there. Um, but now we're starting to learn from historic child abuse cases just what is happening. And it's, it's time for either the police to act on behalf of the people and make those arrests or get the fuck out of the way and let the public do it. Because at the end of the day, it, there must be justice. And if it has to be people's justice, then it has to be people's justice. People like Cameron are apologising for these creatures. They're apologists for paedophiles in there. Every one of them. If you took, if you took all the paedophiles, the apologists for paedophiles and the suspected paedophiles out of Parliament, you wouldn't have enough for a football team. There wouldn't be enough for one single football team, let alone reserves. So until that's addressed, and hopefully with people like Bill in there and John Mann and Simon Danzak, and Robert Green, these are, these are hard-hitting names. These are good people that have fought for years. I've followed them for years. John and Simon, all right, more recently, because the Rotherham stuff's only just come up, the Nottingham stuff's only just come up. But Bill, Robert Green, followed them for years. They have campaigned tirelessly. Robert's been put inside at least three times, I know. I was protesting outside Craig Inch's prison for him about two years ago, because they locked him up because he was handing out flyers with the truth on it. See, this is what I'm saying. They lock us up to shut us up. But they don't do anything near that with the politicians. They are immune. Remember that word. They are immune from questioning, like it's a disease. But the disease is in there. The depraved and the diseased are in there. And today, hopefully, that is going to get addressed or we're just going to have to keep coming back with more and more people until one day we surround this place and shut it down until it gets fixed. Iceland managed it. They stood round their parliament yeah. with their pots and pans banging. And I think about a week later, government give up and they all got thrown out. Because I don't know if you know, but if you can, if you stop people getting into parliament, if they're on a holiday and they come back and the whole place is surrounded by 10,000 people, they have to go away. You cannot make a decision for the country unless you're in Parliament. You, the, the best they can do is call a Cobra meeting at 10 Downing Street. Then 10 Downing Street. But no, no decisions can be made because Parliament is effectively sealed off. Only Parliament, only in Parliament can these decisions be made. So if, if we close it down with them in there, that's even better because they can't come out. Or if they do come out, you don't let them back in again. We have to follow Iceland's suit. We have to have a velvet revolution where we're stood outside, thousands upon thousands of us, sustained, not going home to watch X Factor, not going home to watch EastEnders, not going home to watch Corrie, not going home because you're cold or because it's wet, but staying because it's the most important thing for future generations. These subhuman creatures need to be pulled out of our parliament. And if the police and the system won't do it, then the people must. I need to focus a lot. Hmm? I need to focus. Well, I mean, I, I haven't got all the answers, but the people here today, there are enough people here today that have all the answers and they have they, they have the experience. Some of them are survivors themselves. The best way to deal on, uh, with su survivors of, of, of abuse is listen to them and let, let justice take its course. Natural justice, people's justice. They there's a lot of hurt in those people and they deserve, they deserve justice. And that's what we get arrested.